Federal Republic of Germany. The Republic of Hungary. The Kingdom of Denmark. The Kingdom of Sweden. The Kingdom of Norway. The Republic of Finland. Japan. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland.
the United States of America. Canada. The French Republic. the Italian Republic.
massive earth-shaping glaciers of the last ice age, the alpine landscape consists of U-shaped valleys separated by steep pinnacles. As seen here in the German Alps, the great ice sheets carp broad valleys depositing material eroded from the high peaks on the floors. Today the glaciers have retreated, leaving a dramatic landscape that attracts skiers, mountain climbers and tourists. Developments for them are causing some parts of the mountains to erode. The Himalayas are the world's highest mountain chain, rising like a cliff from the Indian plains, with the vast Tibetan plateau stretching behind them. They were formed 50 million years ago when the Indian continental plate moving north collided with the Asian one. As the plates are similar in composition, the collision has produced a huge crumple zone, lifting coastal sediments up to the top of the mountains five miles high. The great westward spread of settlement in America was held back by the huge natural barrier of the Rocky Mountains. Arizona, Nevada, California, and Utah were Mexican territory until 1848. The discovery of gold in California in 1848 unleashed the huge scramble of the 49ers to cross the Rockies, with many dying en route. The Rockies were finally defeated by the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869, but still retained their harsh and rugged beauty. used in this animation would be familiar to an exploration geologist using satellite imagery to help locate mineral or fossil fuel deposits. Here in Sheep Mountain in Wyoming, infrared and visible images are combined to identify specific rock types. Blue shows clay-rich rock. Red is silica-rich. The base of the ridge is a golden-brown sandstone with blue-gray limestone higher up. The purple in the plains indicates shale, which can contain oil. Here, the terrain model has also been produced from satellite images, enabling the geologist to cover a wide area quite quickly, before selecting likely places to visit and examine in more detail by analyzing rocks on the ground. The taiga can be found at higher, colder latitudes across Canada, Scandinavia, and northern Russia. Although somewhat milder in climate than the tundra, the taiga is a dark and cold habitat. Conifer forests thrive in these regions despite frozen or waterlogged surroundings, and despite generally poor soil and weak sunlight. Deserts are found where there is little or no rainfall throughout the year, most notably in North Africa, the Middle East, Australia, and parts of America and Asia. They have the lowest concentration of vegetation, with plants like cacti and Joshua trees adapted to conserve water. The Mediterranean biome, also known as chaparral, exists on the margins between desert and savanna or grasslands, with evergreen trees like the eucalyptus dominating. Not surprisingly, this biome can be found in the majority of countries surrounding the Mediterranean Sea, as well as in California, Chile, the southern tip of Africa, and southwestern Australia. This biome is found above the tree line in high mountain ranges such as the Himalayas, Andes, and Rockies. Cold and rugged, these high altitude environments make it difficult for plant life, though many species, including a variety of flowering plants, manage to find a foothold, not only in protected mountain meadows, but higher up in the nooks and crannies of rocky peaks.
tundra is found bordering the Arctic Circle in the northern reaches of Canada and Siberia. Not surprisingly, the climate there is too cold and harsh for forests, with low-growing plants often finding shelter in rocks. Tropical rainforests grow in places where there are high average temperatures and heavy rainfall throughout the year. In Brazil, Central America, Central Africa, and Southeast Asia. These rainforests have a higher variety of plant and animal species than any other biome on Earth. Savannah is found in places where there are consistently high temperatures and low seasonal rainfall. In Africa, parts of South America, and Northern Australia. Water supply limits plant growth, with grasses most common. Insects are dominant here as well, especially termites and locusts. Where there is plenty of moisture, but still strong annual variations in temperature, temperate forests form. Also called deciduous forests, this biome can be found on the east coast of the United States, in northern Europe, China, southeast Australia, and New Zealand. Temperate grasslands are found in the prairies of North America, the steppes of Northern Europe, and the pampas of South America. The dry climate of this biome makes tree growth difficult, but still allows the proliferation of a variety of grasses. In this image of Bombay, supplied by NASA and taken during a recent space shuttle flight, you can see the city once known as the Gateway of India. The distinctive peninsula location of Bombay, which is predicted to have the fifth largest population in the world by the year 2000, was once the headquarters of the East India Company. You can see that its sheltered bays made it an ideal trading center. In this image of This view of London was created from Russian spy satellite data, with color provided by the SPOT satellite. Zoom in to pick out Buckingham Palace in its gardens, Hyde Park and the Serpentine, Tower Bridge, and, south of the Thames, the Oval Cricket Ground. What other landmarks can you find? In this photograph of Moscow, taken from the space shuttle, you can clearly make out the river Moskva flowing through Russia's capital. The Kremlin, in the heart of the city, was the administrative center for the Soviet Union. It is situated north of the central bend of the river. To the southwest of the Kremlin, you can just make out Gorky Park. Here you can see the organized grid street patterns of Manhattan Island and New York. Central Park is clearly visible in its midst. But can you pick out Liberty and Governor's Islands off its shores in the Hudson River? Or LaGuardia Airport to the east? Here you can look at the famous West Coast city from every angle. Starting from a bird's eye view, descend to the horizon and zoom in and out to locate the Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz Prison, and the hills of Marin County.
At present, Tokyo is the largest city in the world, although it's likely to be overtaken by Mexico and Sao Paulo by the year 2000. This picture, taken by astronauts from the space shuttle, shows the huge expanse of the eastern metropolis. The several rivers that feed the port are clearly visible, and if you zoom in, you can make out Tokyo Haneda International Airport south of the harbor mouth, and the gardens of the Imperial Palace, almost the only bit of green to the east. Today, we're experiencing the greatest loss of species since life began. We could be losing several dozen species every day, far faster than when the dinosaurs died out 65 million years ago. There is a real danger that our grandchildren could live in a world where tigers, rhinos, and the California condor are only memories left on video. The reasons are habitat destruction, population growth, and sheer greed as demand for products from endangered species continues. Setting aside protected areas has saved some species, but this only works if local people can earn a living from the reserves rather than poaching. Otherwise, national parks may only exist on paper. There's nothing new about habitat destruction. Early U.S. settlers spread out across the prairies and plowed too deep. The soil blew away, leaving the dust bowls of the 30s. Today, the problem isn't just plowing. From space, you can see fires burning across the Amazon. They're started by landless peasants clearing land to make a living in the forest. They're often joined by loggers, and finally, cattle ranchers creating temporary grazing land for livestock. The richest habitat on Earth could be gone in under 40 years. The government is aware of the problem, but the profits help pay off international debts. Some creditor nations, meanwhile, are writing off these debts, but it may be too little too late. Habitat destruction, however, is not limited to the world's tropical forests. Take a look for yourself. Prince William Sound, Alaska, 1989. 12 million gallons of oil spew onto a pristine coastline in the world's worst oil tanker accident. In 1992, retreating Iraqi troops torched 850 Kuwaiti oil wells and opened the sluices, releasing into the Persian Gulf 20 times as much oil as was spilled by the Exxon Valdez. Headline disasters like these are devastating to local environments and economies, but they can be cleaned up but 800 million gallons of oil slip unnoticed into the oceans every year. Much from tankers illegally rinsing out their hulls with seawater, but most from leaking land-based waste sites. We consume 57 million barrels of oil a day, making gas, plastics, heating oil. The more we consume, the more we pollute. Fishing today is an around-the-clock, high-tech business. In the North Pacific, fleets from Japan, Taiwan, and Korea use satellite technology to help locate and track the shoals. Unfortunately, this massive effort has led to overfishing. The world catch peaked in 1989 and has declined ever since. More fish are being caught than are being replenished, which is alarming news for an ever-expanding world population that can't afford to lose a key source of food. Over-exploitation of marine resources is not new. The great whales, for example, were hunted to the verge of extinction as an industry destroyed itself with little thought for the future. Ozone is a type of oxygen formed in the upper atmosphere that helps block harmful radiation from the sun. In this animation based on satellite data, the ozone can be seen forming a protective layer around the globe. 
but over Antarctica, a huge ozone hole develops each spring. The protective layer is being destroyed. Here's the culprit. Green shows reactive chlorine that attacks the ozone when sunlight hits the polar air in the spring. The chlorine comes from a range of useful compounds called CFCs, used widely for refrigeration and industrial processes. When old refrigerators are trashed, the CFCs escape into the atmosphere. With less protective ozone, more harmful radiation gets through. Too much sun, particularly around noon, can lead to skin cancer. Everyone needs to be careful about sunbathing, particularly those with fair skin. Happily, there is some good news. In 1990, most of the world's governments agreed to phase out CFCs. Every second, two babies are born. By the year 2000, there'll be six billion of us, five times as many as there were in 1900. Child death rates have fallen almost everywhere. And many people want large families, as their children may be their only security in old age. Overpopulation is only a problem when people have insufficient access to resources like clean water, food, and housing. So no matter how good the ads for contraception, the most successful population programs work at improving people's living standards and education. Overpopulation is worst in the world's ever-expanding urban areas. At night, satellites pick out our major cities. By the century's end, eight of the world's ten largest conurbations will be in developing nations. Seventy percent of the globe is blue. We live on planet water not planet Earth. But only a few drops out of every barrelful on the planet are available as fresh water. Severe water shortages now occur regularly around the globe, from sub-Saharan Africa to the western United States. In California, they address the problem with high-tech irrigation, using only half the water normally required. In Israel, they convert salt water into fresh water, but both these options cost millions. Money few can afford. But mismanaging water sources can have dramatic results, as in Kazakhstan, where irrigation for cotton and fruit crops diverted supplies that were once destined for the Aral Sea. Today, the Aral shrunken, too shallow to navigate and too salty for fish. Here are just a few of the tens of thousands of threatened species around the world. Here you can see the reduction of the size of the Aral Sea over 20 years caused by diverting the rivers that feed it for irrigation. Welcome to Around the World, the global trivia challenge that tests your knowledge of flags, facts, and photos from every corner of the planet. Answer questions and rack up travel miles to advance. First one to circumnavigate the globe wins. Wow! Whoa!